few boys are not using Lambda yet, well, you need to focus on me because I'm just going to introduce you to a wonderful world. So come on, let's go. Say we have a list of integers and we'd like to create a new list of all the numbers which are over 5. Traditionally, you would do something like this. But with lambdas, you can do the same thing, but with much less code. Let's break it down. We begin by referencing the list we'd like to filter. Then we call a function which is suitable to the situation. In this case, I'd like to grab a subset from this list, so I'll use the where function. We're saying, give me the items from this list where my condition is met. In the parentheses, we start by supplying the argument to the function. This can be looked at the same as an argument given to a normal function. If it's more your style, you can give your lambda variables more descriptive names, but this is entirely up to you. I much prefer short, concise names. Following is the array function, or more suitably known here as the lambda operator. This allows you to create an anonymous function, which is just an inline function without a name. The variable and lambda operator is the equivalent to this section of a real function. Last comes the actual function logic. The WHERE clause expects a Boolean value to determine if this item in the list should be included in the new list. This section is equivalent to the inner logic of a normal function. So to summarize, the WHERE clause will run this section of code for each item in the list and return the current item if it's greater than 5. Let's explore some additional Lambda methods. Here, we have a list of Steam games. Let's say we'd like to know if all the games have a rating of at least 9 and above. For this, we can use the all function. As you can see, it follows the same syntactical conventions the where function does. Here, we're asking if all the items satisfy our condition, to which the answer is no. Cyberpunk destroyed our condition, just like it destroyed our hopes and dreams. Without Lambda, this code might look something like this. OK, what if you'd like to grab a list of the names? We can use the SELECT function to do just that. By the way, iEnumerable is a collection interface. It allows us to establish the idea for a list without actually processing it. Only when you call on it does it get computed. Lazy loading, if you will. We can force it to process immediately by using the ToList function. Select is very powerful as it allows you to create entirely new objects. Let's say we have another object called star rating, which has the name of the game and the star rating out of 5. We can take our game list and return a new star rating object using the properties of the original item. We'll divide our rating by 2 as the max star rating is 5, not 10. Another common function is first. This will find the first item which satisfies the condition and return it. But be careful, this will throw an invalid operation exception if the list contains no elements which match. An alternative strategy is to use first or default. This will return an item if it finds one, otherwise the variable will be null. Okay, let's end with something interesting. Let's say we work for Steam and we need to recommend three games to the user on the home screen. The games need to fulfill the following criteria. They need to have at least a score of 9. They need to be released after the year 2018. And the games must be randomly selected so that the user gets a different set of games each time he visits the homepage. I've added some additional games to make it a bit more interesting. First, let's assemble a list of games which satisfies our demands. Just as a traditional if statement, we can use the AND operator to check for multiple conditions. The beautiful thing about Lambda expressions is that we can string together multiple functions with ease. So now that we have our filtered games, let's shuffle them to ensure we're presenting a random set to the user. We can use the ORDERBY function to do just this. Whatever value we return from this function is what will be used to order the items. For example, we could place the game score here, or the release date. 
But we want to randomize this list, so let's use the random class to just return a random value. Now the list is shuffled, we need to grab three values from the list. We can use the take function to do this. Take will grab the first three items from the list, which is fine for us as it's all been shuffled around. Pretty freaking snazzy, right? One last thing I'd like to show you is how to create your own lambda function. I urge you to take a look into the many wonderful functions available to you. What I've shown you today is just a tiny glimpse of its offerings.